Yes, so we are continuing with the uh, program. So the, our next speaker is Nicolas Oji, uh, who will be talking about benchmarking, big data, uh, and automating such benchmarking, which is actually a great topic and kind of dovetails into some of the uh, presentations on BigTop. So I hope maybe some of you will consider adding this stuff to the BigTop. So with that, the stage is yours. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, as you said, this is a good uh, continuation for the previous talk. Uh, it's a bit different on some on some way, but we <coughs> tackled on the same uh, kind of problems when trying to set up and configure big data systems. I'm from the Barcelona Supercomputing System and Technical University of Catalonia, they're in Barcelona. Um, and yes, and we have been benchmarking Hadoop and the ecosystem for over two years continuously. And this talk is a bit about the tools that we have released, um, but that, that were designed for our daily usage. Um, we found many things trying to benchmark Hadoop into HPC systems, uh, cloud, and uh, even low-power low devices, ARM architectures. So I'm going to briefly go over those. So the agenda, I'm briefly going to introduce the problematic. Why do we need Hadoop benchmarking and so much? Uh, the Aloja project, this is the open source project that we're working on. Um, a little bit on benchmarking, according to the time we have. And, uh, and I'm going to go through the results and briefly over the predictive analytics and modeling capabilities that we have in the framework to extract performance knowledge. And the idea with this is to automate the whole uh, benchmarking process even further. Okay, so let's start with Hadoop. Probably most of you know Hadoop. Um, Hadoop was designed to scale almost linearly to solve the complex data problem different kinds of data structures and structure non structure you throw all the data in. Um, it's application level uh, reliability, so it can run on commodity hardware. Um, but one of the things I want to remark that I think it, it got into Hadoop popularity is the MapReduce programming model. It simplifies a lot the programming model from previous uh, um, programming <coughs> paradigms such as MPI or QDA that are used typically in HPC systems. Um, so for the data analyst, MapReduce has been very helpful. They need to worry on uh, writing a map and reduce function or similar for Spark and other systems. And the complexity of concurrency, locking, replication, reliability is hidden from the data analyst. This is fine. The Hadoop operates as a black box. Uh, but um, if you're a system administrator, if you're running the system, um, this can be finding actually what's going on uh, beneath and trying to optimize, get the most out of your hardware can be really hard. This is even further with Jarn. Jarn simplifies and uh, logically abstracts uh, system resources further. But if you really want to extract uh, performance from your hardware, um, it's, it's not that simple. Okay. Okay, and Hadoop was designed to be highly scalable, but not a high-performance solution. If you read the original HDFS papers, uh, they're talking about reliability, scaling, linear scaling, but not high-performance. In Hadoop, to really get the performance out, you need to um, design the topology of the cluster. You need to select how you will arrange the disks, the mount points. In, for example, you need to put disk in a JBoot kind of fashion, in an array, not in a RAID controller to get more performance. Um, you need to set up the OS, uh, Hadoop configuration, and all of this requires a lot of iterative, fine tuning of configuration parameters in all of the system, and it's very time consuming. And <coughs> so it requires extensive benchmarking. Part of the reason for this is that Hadoop by itself has over 100 configuration parameters. Um, some of these parameters can be more simple, like the number of mappers that can run per host in parallel or containers. Uh, usually you have some rules of thumb in books or in blogs, tells you, okay, put one container per core you have in your system and, and things like that. But other parameters are <coughs> more obscure and might be interrelated with, with others and dependent on your hardware, like uh, percentages for spilling uh, buffers to the disk. Um, and another part is that the default values of Hadoop here, I have them on, on the default values on Hadoop, are not usually the, the best performing values. For that you need to do benchmarking, but also 
in some blocks you can find that, for example, you store megabytes, the default value was 100, uh, but uh, 300 might, in some blocks, say, <coughs> might work better. And the same for other parameters. This is not only for um, Hadoop, but also happens in, in the rest of the stack. And you don't, you don't only have to tune these systems, you also have to tune from the physical level to the application uh, level. So there's a big stack for tuning. Um, so how do I set my system? There are too many options. Should I move to the cloud? Should I um, have my system on-premise? Um, what distribution of Hadoop should I use? Should I follow product claims? One of the problems in the ecosystem right now is that uh, there's a very little transparency. <coughs> Uh, every new enterprise version of Hadoop that comes out from vendors is faster than the others. It's very difficult to actually uh, verify this and uh, make sure that you're, you're getting uh, the right thing. There's no one fit all solution. It all depends on your data, your software, and, and your application, and, and your budget. And um, what about new hardware? like? SSPs, infinibus networking that you find on HPC systems, pretty much uh, only on HPC systems. Um, should I use them for Hadoop? Should I invest in this new hardware? These are all questions that if you want to set up a new cluster, optimize or migrate, uh, you might be asking yourself, even if to put it in the cloud into platform as a service, for example. So that's a little bit the background for our project. <coughs> our project is called uh, Aloja. And it's an open project, and the idea is to improve the cost effectiveness of the data system. The idea is to um, um, take into account costs and performance of the systems and be able to get the most out of your hardware to make them more efficient. And through these two years, pretty much, that we have been benchmarking Hadoop, we have used some tools, uh, mainly three main components, the data benchmarking tools where we have a script to um, deploy on servers, either on cloud or on premise, uh, configure Hadoop for benchmarking, uh, put all the binaries that you need, uh, start benchmarking, collect results, gather telemetry and performance metrics, and keep, uh, unpack everything in, into a turbo. And then we have the online repository. We're not only making the source uh, open, but also the performance data. So all of the performance uh, benchmark, that, uh, all the performance data is up on our website. It can be browsed and uh, you can look at all of the logs. And on top of that, no one wants to be looking at uh, thousands of logs with uh, thousands of lines. You probably did this at this one time or another. Uh, we're adding um, analytics tools on top of this uh, big corpus of data. And uh, I'm going to show some results later. We have over 50,000 runs of benchmarks. Um, this is a large, I think, a large number. We're also doing a lot of machine learning. Uh, so we have a big data problem within the project, and we're trying to use different big data tools and analysis to get uh, performance knowledge. And we test on different uh, hardware configuration. We have over 100 different configurations tested. And we want to broaden the community. We're working with some universities, uh, and some, of, some companies are already using either the results or a private installation of, of the framework. OK, so this is the main workflow that I would like for it to, to have. It's mostly done. Um, so the first thing when benchmarking, you need to decide where you're going to execute things and, and, and what, of course. The first thing is defining a cluster. Uh, this might be, this if you only have one cluster, it's, it might be silly. You say, okay, I just have one cluster, but in the cloud, you could have uh, different sizes of clusters. You can pick different virtual machines. For example, in Microsoft Azure, you could, last time I checked, there were over 32 different uh, virtual machines you could uh, uh, select to execute Hadoop. Which one is, is better? You might need to benchmark that. Uh, here you can select the number of nodes, the operating system, or distribution you want. And then once you have that, um, for example, in our case, we have a 20-node a cluster. And what we do is sometimes we run with 16 data nodes. Uh, sometimes we run in parallel two of eight. And we do different sizes of, of cluster, depending if we want to iterate configuration faster or we're testing scalability. So 
Um, the first thing is a logical definition of what, what is a cluster, what disks I'm going to be testing, because even though your cluster might have six disks, I just want to benchmark with one or with two or to see the, the scalability of this, how they have to performance. Then is the execution plan, uh, okay, what benchmarks I'm going to run, what configurations I want to iterate on. Um, this, this part takes care of the deployment and actually running the benchmarks. And from that, you get uh, uh, the, the benchmark has already run, you have all the performance uh, uh, traces, and you need to import them. So it's a lot of log parsing, and we put everything into a relational database. We call the historical repository, and from that, you can do your normal uh, performance analysis. And we're working with researchers on predictive analytics and automatic uh, knowledge discovery. Okay, so some of the challenges we were facing uh, two years back when we were starting, we wanted to test on different architectures, and what happened was that uh, for some HPC systems, we had to access the system uh, with different users, we have different access, uh, we have different uh, access levels, on, in some systems we got a root user, especially in cloud system, well, with a root user you can do everything, in the cloud you can destroy, you start virtual machines, and on HPC system systems at Uvaro, um, you cannot install in packages and, and, and pretty much do whatever you want. You, you need to play well with others and when you're benchmarking, uh, when you're done with it, leave no traces on the system. So you need to uninstall everything and pack everything. Um, so we found that some tools that were working for on-premise hardware uh, wasn't working for the cloud, neither uh, deployment tools. Also, um, Platform as a service, it's a different paradigm. You don't install uh, Hadoop, uh, you just uh, run your jobs there. Um, and of course, you have different versions of softwares. And we have many, we found many problems. Most of the tools, open source tools for Hadoop and deployment and configuration are sold for production environments. When you're benchmarking, uh, you're not running something continuously. Also, when doing performance analysis, um, uh, you're interested in comparing things, not if the system is running fine at that particular moment. Um, we started working a lot with Puppet, uh, I think it was mentioned before. Um, we dropped using Puppet some time ago because the <coughs> benchmarking was really slowing us down. Not only uh, deployment times, but also <coughs> the learning curve for, for other people using the, the platform. And Another thing that we were lacking was a development environment. I come from a development background, and in big data, you pretty much to test things, you need a, a cluster. And this was very problematic uh, two years ago. Uh, so we spent a lot of time um, building background boxes, working with Docker to try to be able to run everything from a, a local environment. So what we end up doing, like everyone does, is a kind of Frankenstein solution, like this elephant. Um, <laughs> Uh, so it's a custom implementation, but we basically <coughs> have an abstraction layer um, on top of very simple and unknown components, and we want to give it a, a like a same interface to access either HPC clusters or cloud services. Okay, the repository, as I was saying, is three main components. <coughs> what I want to remark is that the big data benchmarking part is only bash scripts. We call them the typical Unix tools and. For the cloud, we use the, the each cloud provider's uh, binaries. Um, bash is, or shell scripting is what you generally use when doing uh, benchmarking anyway. Uh, for the web part, we have the typical LAMP, but with Nginx. Uh, we keep everything right now on, on MySQL. And for analytics, we use R, SQL for grouping, and JavaScript for um, interactiveness and, and, and the web. Um, to clone the repository, to get uh, a sample data set and everything working is uh, just cloning the repo. A background app should download everything. And you could also run a, a development cluster on your, on your local environment if you want. We'll go to results. We have some commands to connect. Uh, this is very useful for me. Like I use connect cluster name and it will connect to me if it's cloud or an HPC cluster. It will select the user automatically, but everything in configuration files. Uh, if I need an SSH gateway, I can have that pre-configured. So I do connect cluster name and then the, 
example, it's printed the whole SSH that uh, connects, but you don't have to be remembering host names, IP addresses, users, and things. It's really useful when you have uh, over 10 clusters running in, in parallel with the deployment scripts, and also queuing. Um, when you're submitting many benchmarks, we queue them to track if they fail or not. Um, but some support for these cloud providers, OpenStack is supported, and some platform as a service. And to run some benchmarks, let's start the script. It's just for it's just a script called RankBench. Uh, this is on my machine. Uh, well, the resolution is. Um, this is work on what it does. The script it, it will it will start testing the cluster, test the connectivity. If it needs to download, um, we can probably pause this. Uh, I'll just leave it like that. It, it will download Hadoop binary if it's necessary. Set up everything. Start uh, what well, this is what you typically see when we start in Hadoop. Uh, checking if the ports are open. Starting the telemetry. And it will start running, uh, in this case, a work that I had set up for it. Um, the results are online on our website. Uh, there you can browse all of the different executions, see the performance log, but I'm going to pass through some more advanced uh, results. One of the things we do is a speed up charts, it's normalized graphics of performance. You can select which uh, category, like uh, I want to see what's the impact of changing the number of containers, the number of mappers in parallel and things like this. Here we have uh, two charts. Uh, here we're testing this uh, network in a cluster, rotational disk plus Ethernet, higher is better here. Each color is a different benchmark. <coughs> uh, here we added SSDs with Ethernet networking, we see uh, speed ups for some of the benchmarks. Then we tested rotational disk with Infiniban, and we see that there is not much improvement from running it with regular Ethernet. So if, if, if you, you have Infiniban to really take advantage of it, you need to have a fast deep disk system. This is SSDs and Infiniban. And here we measure how much uh, performance improvement you will get by, for example, um, adding more expensive hardware. Infiniban with rotational was not uh, uh, performing well and with SSDs, but this is not the same for all benchmarks. And in the other chart here is uh, similar but in the cloud. The first is executing with HDFS on a local disk, which is faster, but on the cloud, uh, uh, usually local disk is for a scratch or temporary. You put the files on S3, uh, glove storage, whatever. Uh, so this is with one remote volume. You see that the performance decreases significantly. Here we added a second one, we got a little bit more performance, but with the third, we didn't get more uh, speed up increase. We got more capacity in the system, but no more speed up. The last three bars are one, two, and three remotes, but having the Hadoop temp uh, directory on the local disk. So you can use the local disk for temp files and get some uh, performance speed up. You can see more samples on the site. This is another one, but taking costs into account. Here I have uh, dollars, cost on the y-axis, and execution time. So 0 0.00 is the best. These are, uh, each bubble is a different cluster of different um, VM flavors. So we see here that the fastest one is the performance 230, but it's also more expensive than the performance 18, which is a slower. And these three others, pretty much I can discard. I see these are not the fastest and are not the cheapest virtual machines to run Hadoop on. Even though these ones were called IO130, IO115, these are IO optimized virtual machines, but probably for relational databases. In the case of Hadoop, uh, the configurations we tested, we didn't do this. And you get this information also in a, in a tabular format, so um, the most recommended cluster would be this one. This would be the most cost effective. A run of TerraSort of 100 gigas will cost uh, 30 cents and will take about 400 seconds. But the fastest, which is the fourth here recommended, will be this one and it would take uh, almost 300 seconds, but the execution cost will be 72 cents. And this is some of the comparisons we're making. Another one is scalability. Here we're changing the x axis to number of nodes from 2 to 32. Uh, the solid curve is uh, execution time, 
So as we add more nodes, uh, the faster it goes. But we found that there is a point of diminishing returns here. This uh, dashed lines is costs. And in this particular cluster, an example, after eight nodes, um, you could gain a little bit more performance, but your cost will go higher. This is for cloud. And we also have some predictive analytic tools. I just want to go briefly over them. You can ask me a bit more later. We do the typical uh, three-step learning process for machine learning. We have a, we split all the data set into a training, validation, and a test data set. And with that, we model Hadoop with different uh, classifiers. I, um, I will give the references of the different classifiers we use. And the use cases we get to this is First, anomaly detection. We have over 50,000 runs, and we don't know which ones fail and which ones not. Which one are outliers or not, which one need manual attention. So the first use case we give is uh, outlier detection. Here we see the ones in red and orange are the ones that uh, mark as outliers. We use it to predict what would be the best configuration for a given hardware, even though we haven't benchmarked that. Uh, guided benchmarking. So I, don't, uh, I have a new cluster, I need to do benchmark, I ask the system which is the configuration I should uh, run next, and next and next, so uh, to automate the configuration iteration further. And we're working a lot on knowledge discovery. Okay, so the idea is here that uh, we don't have uh, um, to be doing the, looking at the logs and all of the performance of all of the runs, but uh, to automate this further, to get the insights right from, from the model. And this is a uh, work in progress, of course. Just to conclude, um, we've been benchmarking different systems for over two years. Each, has, each system has its own uh, peculiarities. Uh, either <coughs> users, sometimes you have different versions of the software installed, even different bash versions might make. One of the reasons we use bash is very portable. But uh, you can find that since some systems that you get to benchmark on have a bash 3, uh, a very old version, and then you know, some things are not supported. <coughs> different access levels, different packages, different versions, this all impact on benchmarking and it, it, it gives you uh, some hard work. And they all fail, uh, fail one way or the other. And, and, but you need to, to, to program to, to, for failure, you need to be aware of if a benchmark fails, close, make sure you close all the ports, all the telemetry, so next time you run, it run, might run. Okay? Um, I like benchmarking, <coughs> benchmarking is fun. If you don't like it, uh, well, uh, at least it will save you some money if you, if you have your own cluster, or it will allow you to scale even further. Uh, if you don't want to run the benchmark yourself, you can start by looking at the results we have on our website. Um, one, thing of, one of the things we want to bring is a little bit more transparency into the big data ecosystem, uh, having the logs and everything reproducible from benchmarks. Uh, so we have scripts. We're working on version 3 of the platform. Uh, you're invited to participate. Please come look at me uh, if you have more questions. I will leave uh, some more references on the slides of papers and other presentations for, from benchmarking. Um, <coughs> Just to finish, this is our supercomputer in Barcelona, and, um, called Mare Nostrum. If you are architecture, either are a building architecture or computer architecture, you might like this. It's a tourist attraction in town. Uh, it's inside a, an old chapel. So if you're around town, uh, come to visit us. We can talk about uh, some different systems. That would be all. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Uh, you said that you previously used Puppet. Yes. What are you using now? Uh, yeah, it's pure rush. Yes. Uh, I'm very happy with it. But is it uh, easy to switch out to something else? Well, the problem with Puppet was that uh, if you run a production environment, it's fine. Um, because you have uh, you have everything installed already, but uh, we were deploying clusters very frequently, and for example, installing modules was very very slow. And sometimes a module, will, my SQL module, will fail to install for some reason or some other module. Also, uh, it was a slowing uh, deployment down. 
also uh, when working with somebody new joined the team or was working with it, you have to learn Puppet. And the, the being not uh, sequential, the execution, it was very confusing for some people. And it, it, in the end, uh, we removed it. In the end, you're writing uh, pretty much similar to Bash script in Puppet, so we just removed it that later on. I'm not against public Yeah, uh, I mean, how easy is it to adapt to measure benchmark Um Yes. Basically, it's, it's a bash script. You tell it uh, if you have a confirmation for your script, and then you will define a run function where this is a sleep example um, where you tell it what command to execute. There are some more complex examples, but you pretty much copy a, a, a file and then modify it with your script. That's, that's the idea. And if, yeah. if you said <coughs> that you use the TV bank for a uh, group as well, but you're already referencing the low hanging fruit like IP over IV, or is it native for TV? No, IP over IV. Yes, well, on, on documentation, we'll not get to that. It's not possible to use native, native IP works, right? It is. Uh, there are some modules. Um, uh, Melanox, Infiniman Provider, provides some modules for you, for UDMA, I think it's called, and um, there's a university that also provides some modules for coming, but it's a external thing. Any, any more questions? Yeah. What, what granularity of uh, measurements do you have to go down to the uh, container of the measure? Uh, it's been like a process, a yeah. process. Um, Yes and no. We, could, we don't enable it by default uh, process, per process metrics. Um, we do parse the Hadoop logs and get there every each mapper and user and, and the state and the, the amount of data that it has uh, processed at that time, at that point in time. But we don't go per process uh, by default. So it's too much longer. Do so, so you have a, a detailed steps by which you can measure the what? Do you have the detail stats uh, from this uh, for the exact node, or do you measure it like a whole cluster? No, for <laughs> per node. Yeah. What uh, scenario do you use? Scenario? What? Yeah, benchmarking scenarios. What ah, okay, so we, we don't develop the benchmarks themselves, we mainly use Highbench, which is a benchmark suit, it has a Terrasol work on some machine learning examples, uh, some natural language processing, we use uh, TPCH, it's a, a standard SQL, um, for data warehouse on Hive, uh, Bigbench, which is one, a benchmark that is uh, specifically for um, big data systems, based on TPCH. Um, and we're working with the spec, I didn't mention that, with the spec uh, uh, standardization body on benchmarks to build a, a, a new um, big data benchmark. And with that, we're out of time, so thank you so much.